Hi everybody and welcome to ULS Group's first RUK day. Uh, first off, apologies from Giles. Um, unfortunately he'll be here today but he does support this event and it's probably the reason we're having it. As a community, everyone has been impacted by suicide and mental illness. This event today has come about as an attempt by our company to support our staff and community with regards to mental illness and suicide prevention. Earlier this year, when we needed to get some support from some staff, from professionals, Joe went out to the wider world and found it really hard to find a resource. So in the end, he took it upon himself to actually reach out to staff and start a conversation. So that emphasis of Joe going out to people and having a conversation when we came across the Are You OK campaign and their whole ethos to have a conversation, we thought this is something that we need to do to bring out to our staff and community about the idea of starting a conversation and asking the question, are you OK? So today is about coming from that journey over the last six and probably longer months of saying what can we do to actually help spread the word that be there for someone, ask the simple question, are you OK? You don't need to actually solve a problem, it's actually just getting people to talk about it and bringing it to the attention of the community. Part of today with the Are You OK? You can see the, the banners and stuff put up. Everyone will come... Sorry. Everyone will want to walk away with one of these business cards. It's from Are You OK? And it just steps out the simple questions of their philosophy to one, ask are you okay to listen to people to encourage action and to check in but what the big theme is having a conversation and on the back there's just some resource guides so when we looked at all the material out there and how to actually start a conversation we thought everyone is taking home one of these and maybe a stress ball as well might actually just help bring people's awareness to a simple thing that they can actually see someone they might be having a good day they may look anxious you just think that person's not quite right to actually have the ability just to ask them are you okay so I'd like to thank Job over the last six months for actually supporting a lot of our staff and also Deborah as well who've worked gone above and beyond probably the job description they've got to actually reach out to people to make sure they are okay and to support people through processes so thanks Job and Deb for actually reaching out to people over the, over the last six months hand over to Andy who's going to actually give us a speech today. I just wanted to acknowledge a few people that have helped with this day. So first of all, although Giles is not here, I think as and Matt previously, the support that they've given staff over the years to actually help them through and try to keep people here I think is fantastic. A big thanks to uh, Bunnings, the, uh, the marquees, the chairs and some gift prizes. Uh, to uh, Balan Holden for some footies as a giveaway for our um, handball competition, to Mazda Essendon who have donated a prize for a weekend of car use for either the, hat, the convertible or the BTU. So all the, all the money that we've got for the handball competition, I don't know if Wayne's running a putting competition, all the money we're donating back to Are You OK and Pucker Up, which Andy comes from. So yeah, so once again, thanks to all those people. Um, and to Andy and yeah, hopefully after all this we're just raising attention, putting back to the community and having the ability that people can actually care for each other. So thank you. Here's Andy. Thanks Joyce. Um, I'd just like to thank you Alice for inviting me down here today to have a chat to you guys to try and open up the conversation uh, about mental health and suicide prevention. Um, you're an impressive looking group of men, uh, you know, your trades guys. 
Um, you look like a hard bunch that can do a decent day's work. And that's the sort of group that we really need to get into to open up the conversation. Um, I was an apprentice once, uh, roof tiler, and that's a pretty hard game. And I thought I was bulletproof at one stage as well. Um, so yeah, congratulations to ULS Group for you know, uh, being progressive enough to open up a conversation just to try and get into everybody that it is okay to, to have a chat, to pull some of those layers off yourselves, um, to pull some of the hardness away that you have to take every day into work and maybe take home, take to the gym, take to the footy club or something like that because underneath there, um, there is some vulnerability. There is, um, you know, there, there is a softness that, that you know, mental health or suicide can affect. Uh, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Are You OK group, uh, about the Pucker Up organisation that I'm involved with and same with Red and my daughter Mel. Uh, we just brought Kyle along just because he's a handsome young man. We thought we'd bring him along. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about that, a little bit about my journey um, and challenges with mental health and how, like, like I said, I was, a, I was a tradie and thought I was bulletproof and immune from anything like that. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, um, I've known Matt for a long time. I actually coached him in football uh, some 25 or more years ago, I think it was. We Down at Airport West, uh, they won the flag again this year, the, the seniors in the second. So I'd be very confident if any of you guys challenge him at the handball comp, because <laughs> yeah, that wasn't his strong point. God, you guys look like a hard crowd. I reckon I'd love to get you to run down the end of the block and back to get some of that energy out of you. It's, it's, you look like you've been sitting around too long. Maybe you need a pick and shovel or something. Um, okay, so just a little bit about Are You OK Day. That was founded in 2009 by a guy named Gavin Larkin. His father, uh, at age 55, took his own life. And some 14 years later, Gavin uh, founded Are You OK Day. Um, he did it to try and prevent um, you know, future families, friends, work colleagues, teammates, you know, spouses, you know, fathers, daughters, for going through the pain and the suffering that he and his family went through when he lost his father. Uh, the, the, the grief, the incessant questioning of why, what was wrong, could have they done something, could have he done more. So through that uh, came Are You OK Day. Unfortunately, two years later, Gavin lost his life uh, he battled with cancer for a short time, but the legacy of Are You OK Day lives on. Um, it's estimated that today a million conversations can be had by just asking a mate, asking a family friend, a spouse, a relative if they're OK. Um, it's, it's not an easy question to ask. Um, you, like I said, you guys have to pull off the layers, you have to pull off the lime jackets, you have to take your tattoos off, you have to remove that harshness on your face and you have to open up your heart to be able to do that. And for a lot of people, that's difficult. You have to get you know, a little bit deeper into yourself. A lot of you guys might think that's bullshit, that it won't help, but you could save a life. Honestly, if you really do open up yourself, pull off a few of those layers, and connect with somebody on a human level, that they're a human being, that maybe they're struggling, that maybe they just reach out to them, uh, it could make all the difference. So I, I don't know the full story of this, the organisation or the background or the connection, with uh, mental health or suicide, but can I ask who here has known somebody or been close to somebody who has suicided? So that's like a good half of us here. Can I, can I ask you also a question? Who here has had a mental health issue or knows somebody close to them that has struggled with a mental health issue? All right, that, that's nearly all of us. Um, so you can just see the broadness and um, the incessantness of a mental health issue. It just it doesn't discriminate. It affects primary school kids, high school kids, adolescents, teenagers, mums, dads, grandparents. Um, can, I, can I just get a bit of participation here? Can I get six, six guys, anyone, and two women here? Don't be afraid, I'm not going to ask you any questions. I just want you to be here to represent something. Can I get six guys? Six. Okay, how about if I said six men? <laughs> and, and two women. So just stand up here front and centre, guys. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you or ask anything silly.
All right, you have a look at these people here. Every day, six men and two women take their life in Australia. That's every day for a year. Uh, I don't mean to pick these people out, but that's how it's represented. Three men to one woman take their life every day. You can fill the MCG, you can put 100,000 people in the MCG, you do that every three days for a year. If you filled it full of men, 18 men would not come out of there every three days. If you fill it full of women, six women won't come out of there every three days. That, that's how massive this, this illness is, this disease. Um, just keep going back to what, what you could do to help. Thanks, guys. All right, so you can see how, how broad the issue is. Um, the number I'm wearing on my top, 2866, in 2016, that's how many people in Australia took their own lives. Of that, 2,153 were men. Like I said before, three to one women. We need to ask ourselves why. Uh, I think one of the big, big reasons why is, like I said before, it's really hard for us to pull the layers off ourselves. Um, I grew up in a very male dominated atmosphere, a very masculine atmosphere. I lost my mum when I was young, I was about six years old. So I had a lot of male influence around me. I love my dad dearly, uh, but he was a hard man, hard man. You might be able to relate to this, you guys being landscapers. My dad's first job in 1955 was at the Faulkner Cemetery digging one grave a day by hand. He had a pick and a shovel and he would dig a grave a day. Now, I went to the toilet before and had a look out there, that is full of machinery. And I get, I could, could not imagine you guys doing it, I could not imagine myself doing that. But a 15 year old man leaving school and going to do that, he, he was only a boy at the time. So um, that was the influence that it had on me. It was man up, harden up, get up, don't cry, go harder. You know, lots of lessons like that. And like I said, I love my dad dearly. But the men that stood behind him and stood around him, giving him those same lessons, you know, harden up, dig harder, dig faster. Uh, you know, don't worry about the blisters on your hands. Don't worry about the sweat in your eyes, all that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm just here today to implore the men, in particularly, to, to have a different conversation, especially if you've got young boys, if you've got kids, you've got teenagers around you, have a different conversation to them. But it's okay. For a long time, I didn't know how to express my emotions. I didn't know how to deal with them. I had anger, I had sadness, and below all anger, like, like I said, a lot of you guys are impressive men, you could probably hold your own in, in any situation. But if you, do, if you are violent, if you are angry, underneath that all the time is fear. You're scared of something. And that's why you put on the brave face, that's why you flex your muscles, that's why you push people around because you're scared of being in your own space. You don't know who you are without that. You don't know what type of person can be loving, can be caring, can be honest, and can be open. Um, I used to think that a brave man was a man who could hold himself in a fight, who would fight. You know, unfortunately, often I was violent. Um, the anger exploded out of me because I didn't know how to deal with it. And the, those around me thought I was brave. Those around thought, you know, thought that I was a courageous guy. I've never seen such courage as a man standing up and crying, saying he's not well, I need help, I'm struggling. That's more brave, more courageous than anyone I've ever seen throw a punch. You know, that, uh, to me now, that's cowardice, because you're hiding behind your fear, you're hiding behind your, your strength, your muscles, you're pushing people around because you're scared. Um, and unfortunately, that's why men struggle to come out and say, I'm struggling, I'm hurting, something doesn't feel right, it's too much, I can't take it anymore, I don't know how to pay the bills, I don't know how to deal with the kids. Um, you know, all those sort of things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going on about men a little bit because I, I just know a little bit about it because I am one. Men, men do that sort of stuff. We hide our emotions, we put it behind us. Um, for, for a long time I did that. When I was younger, like I said, I was angry, I was upset, uh, I was violent, unfortunately. But I always just used to push, push it behind me. And now I realise what I, what I was doing. I, had, um, I wasn't able to deal with my emotions. And I use an analogy today that I had the black dog with me. I had that black dog that was always here. And I used to push it away. I used to drink. 
I used to smoke. I used to take drugs. I used to get violent. I was addicted to stuff. And I just used to keep running and running and running from the black dog that was there. I didn't turn and face it. I didn't turn and look at it. I didn't look it in the eye to deal with it. And eventually, the black dog got three heads. The black dog got big and hairy, and the black dog got me. It pinned me down. And I didn't know how to deal with it because I didn't know how to deal with my emotions. Um, I didn't have um, role models or figures around me that I thought I could reach out to and touch um, to open up and be honest and say, I'm struggling here, something's not right in my life. So today, I have a black dog with me all the time. At the moment, it's down here. I know where it is, I control it, I know what best to feed the thing. I feed it good stuff, I nourish it. I don't feel, feed it full of shit. I have a beer, I don't mind having a beer, but I don't go over the top. Um, I don't take drugs and smoke anymore. My daughter's here, I wouldn't admit that. No, I don't. Um, but look, I don't do that sort of stuff. There's addictions that, that men in particular get addicted to. Porn. You know, you, are you addicted to porn? It's an escape. Are you addicted to the telly? You sit there and numb out. Do you keep busy as an excuse of being passive in your life somewhere? Where, where are you passive? I'm busy because I can't deal with the kids. I'm busy at work because I can't deal with the missus. I'm busy because I can't deal with my finances. Being busy is, um, gives you an excuse for being passive in some areas of your life. Where aren't you showing up? Where aren't you being a man? Um, so my idea of a man now is a lot different to what it used to be. My idea of a man, a true masculine man, is somebody who can hold their space. They can still hold their space. They can hold their ground. They have a boundary that, yeah, that's right or that's wrong. I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And you guys know in construction that a boundary is a fence. You build a proper boundary, you can't get past it. You know, some, some boundaries are, I, you know, I won't accept harassment against women. It's not acceptable. I won't bag them. I won't big note them. You know, I know that in, in our industry, it's easy to do that, but I won't disrespect them in that way. Um, I won't disrespect myself by going past that boundary. Uh, those, so there's certain things that if you set a boundary, if you, if you break through that, then it's not a boundary. So to me, a strong man has a boundary, sets a boundary, knows how to hold that. But at the same time, he can hold his wife, he can hold his girlfriend, he can hold the woman he loves, but he can still hold a boundary. Um, again, he can hold the space around him when others are doing the same and not get sucked into that sort of stuff, into the criticism, into the bullying, into the hardness, um, and just get dragged along. He can hold his space and say, no, I'm not going to accept that, I'm different. But at the same time, he can hold his child. He can, he can hold the ones he loves. So to me, I've got a much broader perspective of what a man is and what a man should be. Um, so I set boundaries in my life. Like I said, with the black dog, the black dog's here. Um, I know what filters I need to do. I don't go and get pissed all the time. Uh, I exercise regularly. I nourish myself, I feed myself well. I don't get sucked into world headlines, reading the paper. Um, it's okay to flip through the sports and that sort of stuff, but there's, you know, there's violence and there's murder and there's propaganda that gets us sucked in. There's things that get addict us. I know like, as soon as I stop speaking, a lot of you guys are gonna to go to your phone and have a look. It's an addiction. It's something that controls us. Um, a good quote or a good article that I read is that um, Steve Jobs, while he was alive, um, Zuckerberg, and one of the finances of Facebook, he lives with a lot of guilt and shame because they got into the psychology, into the psyche of kids, what is gonna get them addicted to this sort of stuff. And he says he he's, feels like he's ruined a generation of people that won't have a, got emotional intelligence to deal with each other, to deal with themselves, to know how they're feeling inside. Um, so yeah, like I said, I think, I, I just speak for myself, but I think we all have a black dog and it's what we do to deal with it. It's what we do, do we nourish it? Do we run from it? Do we hide from it? Do we abuse ourselves so we don't look at it in the eye? I think a real man can stop and look, look at the black dog and say, you know, where am I not showing up in my life? Why is this, why is this here? What's wrong with me? I need help. I can't do it. Um, so a little bit about Pucker Up. Pucker Up is a very similar organisation to Are You OK? Um, they're about getting open, honest and genuine conversations, becoming vulnerable and speaking your truth 
Last year we rode from Sydney to Melbourne about 1600k, stopping in different towns and having a conversation. Just wearing these t-shirts, people stopped us and said, what's that? What, what's the number mean? And once you started opening the conversation, oh, my uncle committed suicide or my, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody knows it. It touches so many people. Um, again, this year, or next year in 2019, Pucker Up's going to do a ride, and this time just around Victoria. It's, I think it's going to be 10 days, about 1800k visiting towns. Again, opening up the conversation. Very similar to Are You OK? They have a caravan of cars, a convoy of cars, they say they're a convoy of conversations to get the conversation started. Um, so both organisations are very similar. I'm not sure if you know of Wayne Swass. He is the founder of Pucker Up. He was an, an AFL player, played for North and Sydney, played a couple of hundred games, uh, a couple of best and fairest, an All-Australian player. Uh, and he famously says that in, in 1996, in front of 100,000 people, they, they won the flag. He got a medal put over his neck. Wayne, uh, not Wayne Dwight, um, Jack Dyer. Jack Dyer was there presenting the medal to him. And he says, he showed us the video and he said, this is what suicidal looks like. He was suicidal on that day. You know, you put any other kid that plays footy or most any other kid that's ever played football and say, you can stand up on the dais on grand final day in front of 100,000 people. You've worked your ass off with all your teammates and you stand up there and get a medal. Isn't that supposed to be one of the greatest days of your life? He said he stood there and he was thinking, how can I end his life? So that's what happens if you haven't got the ability to speak about it. If you run away, you push it down, you shove it down your neck, because one day it'll come out. And the sooner you look it in the eye, the sooner you look your mate in the eye, the sooner you can sit down and have a conversation with somebody about it, the better it is. The dog's not as big, it's not as angry, it's not as hairy. Um, for those people who have got no concept of what I'm speaking about, God love you, honestly. Uh, I, I applaud you. You guys are, uh, you know, like the light. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep whatever it is that nourishes you, whatever it is that feeds you. Like I said, as long as you're not just putting stuff over it, as long as you're not putting sawdust over it, as long as you're not burying it in that hole, if you, you know, to do the things that do, you've got no concept of what I'm speaking to, that's brilliant, you know. But have compassion for people that do, that maybe suffer from this that maybe haven't got a handle on their mental health, that maybe struggle a little bit. Um, so, you know, like you guys are really, really important. That, you know, you're the shining light. Like I said, it's, it's, um, it's important that we have people that can have the conversation. I call them balcony people that can reach down, help them up. You know, when someone's down, when someone's struggling a little bit, you're standing on the balcony and life's really good for you. Put your hand down, pick someone up. Ask them if they're okay. Get them up on your level. Look at the sun, you know, look at the blue sky. There is plenty to be alive for. Thanks, guys. Um, Andy, I think that was awesome. Um, you're a brave person for getting up and standing in front of us and talking like that. Personally, I couldn't do it, although I can talk lots, to show the honesty that you put forward. Um, and I can see the connection of people as well. So once again, can you thank Andy, guys? He's so as I said earlier, this was all about actually just what, raising awareness. So Parker Up, we've got some things here for sale as well. But all the proceeds from our the weekend use of a car are going to Pucker Up and the company will donate some money as well. The handball competition, all the money's there, are going to Are You OK? So this is not money making, this is just trying to pull back, have a reason. So from here, um, Joe, who's running the handball competition? Gav. Gav. So Gav <laughs> is going to control. So we've got a prize pack for the winner of the handball competition and then Bunnings have donated gifts. We've got Are You OK? packs for just having a go not having to win, you know, because only one person can win. That's probably Heath, I hear, rather than Joe, so that's good. So, um, Gav, we'll get under that, have some conversations. Uh, we'll be walking around to give everyone a card, just with the principles of RUK. I also wanted to thank Wayne, Deb and Amelia, because although this is a work event, they've gone above and beyond to actually help set up as well. So thank you guys for that. And for Wayne for coming through. You always do, Wayne. <laughs> 
find you, Wayne. So thanks. And thanks again to Andy and Pucker Up for uh, the last minute support of this day. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh,